Hi, today we've got another low cost USB soldering iron to take a look at. This one is the KSGR PD210 and this one is currently retailing from various retailers on AliExpress for between 15 and 20 pounds delivered, so ultra cheap. This one takes the JVC C210 type cartridges and it could be powered either by a USB-C power supply or a DC power supply. PCBWay offer a wide range of manufacturing services for your projects, including PCB manufacture, whether that be low-cost prototype boards or professional-level PCBs with specialised substrates. They also do manufacturing of mechanical parts, including CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding. And you can also get your PCB assembly done here, where they can assemble components onto the PCBs and that includes through-hole components on both sides of the PCB. They also have a shared projects area of their website, which is a really nice place where you can have a look at other people's projects and potentially get those made at PCB Way. And you can also share your own designs there, which allow you to earn points and get discounts from PCB Way's services. And while you're visiting PCBWay.com, don't forget they're also celebrating their 10th year anniversary. So don't forget to visit there and click on enter to see what's in store. Here's what the Soldier 9 looks like, and it is undeniable this one does have the feel and appearance of something that is extremely low cost. If you take a close look at the mouldings, for example, you can see there's some separation here and some flash around uh, some of the joints and that kind of thing. But for the price, £15 delivered to the UK, it is kind of quite remarkable that they're able to uh, manufacture something and send it out for that price and this one does have some interesting specifications uh, so this one says it's rated for 70 watts into a c210 cartridge if that's possible we've got a tft color display here rather than the oled that we saw last time we've got the jog wheel this one actually feels significantly better quality compared to the previous one in terms of the feel of the jog wheel uh, left and right was fine before and this one is as well but when you press it it kind of wants to centre itself automatically when you're pushing it in, so it does actually feel much better to use. We've got the USB-C connector on this side here. Uh, this is where we put the C210 cartridge. One of them came with the unit. And then this one also says it detects the presence of your hand there. So rather than a vibration sensor, the literature is suggesting that this one actually has some kind of sensor in here. I think they said inductive in the listing but it has to be capacitive for it to detect a human hand but obviously we'll take this apart shortly and have a look uh, but yeah it is extremely lightweight um, but it is kind of quite functional and even though this end is not round or it's not got an oval form factor actually when you're gripping it you don't really notice the fact that this is rectangle it does actually feel quite comfortable to hold now we've got uh, one of the c210 cartridges here which we can insert into here and push that into place that gives an idea of the grip to tip distance and that does actually feel uh, like we'll be able to do some decent soldering with it now it came with an extremely fine soldering cartridge as you can see there interestingly it has been pre-tinned which is actually quite good uh, some of them are sent out uh, completely straight from the factory this implies it's been tested and heated up and the fact that they've left the solder on there is a good sign uh, it prevents the tip from oxidising as it cools down. Um, so I think that's pretty much all there is to say about the handpiece itself. It did come with one of these adapters again, so that if you want to use a straight DC power supply, you can just plug it in here and power it from here. And it's rated for a 12 volt power supply input. Um, in terms of the USB protocols, it looks like it's, oh, this is in type, um, it looks like the same as before, so PPS, programmable power supply. So if you've got a power delivery uh, USB power supply, basically this tells it what voltage to provide. And I think in this case, uh, you can adjust the settings, but it's set to about 11 volts. Uh, and presumably that sets the amount of current that we would maximally deliver into one of these C210 cartridges. So it looks like the same kind of construction as last time, where you remove the screws and then we unscrew this barrel. And let's take a look inside. On the left here, we've got a USB-C connector, which is then powering this linear regulator, 3.3 volt regulator for the logic on the PCB. And then the power from the USB is then passed through to basically this P-channel MOSFET, an AO4409 SO8 P-channel MOSFET rated for 15 amps up to 30 volts. 
and that's what's able to switch the current into the um, actual heating element of the cartridge. Now, unlike the arrangement before, they've actually got an optocoupler here, which is uh, switching the gate signal. So that's sort of doing a logic level translation. We're feeding in power uh, to drive the LED on here. And then the isolated side of it is being able to switch up to the highest voltage that the USB-C connector can provide, probably about 12 volts in this case. We've got um, a little pin here with some filtering. And this looks like this is probably the capacitive touch sensor. So we'll get the PCB out in a moment. But we've got some good looking um, contacts here for gripping onto the C210 cartridge. And then just on this side here, we've got the same arrangement as before, basically a op amp or an instrumentation amplifier, which is reading the thermocouple and supplying an analog voltage into the microcontroller. So let's see if we can get this out of the plastic. Yep. So no real other components on here. We've got the TFT display, this time with the protective film removed. And then you can see we've got a little pogo pin. And this appears to be pressing onto this piece of copper tape. And this is what's doing the human detection. It'd be really interesting to see how this works because this is quite a novel way of doing it. Normally they use vibration sensors or acceler accelerometers. But if this works well, this is actually uh, possibly a bit of a winner. Uh, because those always suffer uh, from things like uh, requiring a long time before it can go into sleep mode uh, before deciding that someone's not actually using the solder line. So a capacitive touch sensor could be a really nice um, thing to use here. You can see some of the details of the moulding in there as well. Looks like a bit of finessing has been done after it's been taken out of the mould uh, with a Dremel tool or something like that to get rid of some of the bits that were sticking out. But uh, yeah... Um, Quite a nice little PCB here, and these pogo pins aren't necessarily inexpensive, so uh, it is quite impressive that they're able to build this for the price. Right, so let's power this thing up, and we've got a really bright display, and then an exclamation mark because we haven't got the cartridge in there at the moment. Power delivery okay, so it's set to 11 volts, and again 5 amps or so. It looks like we've got a bar graph at the bottom for showing how much power we're drawing. And then if we wanted to adjust the temperature, we can nudge this left and right. And at the moment, it's jumping up and down in 10 degree steps. Well, that is a really, really clear display. I do like these TFTs on uh, little devices like this. And yeah, then when you let go, it would go back to what temperature it was reading. But there's no cartridge in there at the moment. So again, there's no presets on this one. It's just up and down temperature control. And to go into the menu, we hold down the button here. And then we have system settings, first of all. So let's go into there. Um, so encoder here, I think this is actually the step size, basically, for the temperature. So if we change this to 5, then when we go down to exit, uh, when we adjust the temperature, we should see that go in 5 degree steps. Yeah, so that works properly. And then we've got the standby temperature and time. So it'd be interesting to see how this works. It's currently set to 10 seconds, but since it's based on this capacitive sensor, uh, we'll set it to the minimum, which is actually five seconds. So it's not going to be quite as instant as we'd like. Standby temperature is set to 150, so nice and low. And then after not touching it for, it looks like one minute, it will turn off the cartridge completely. In terms of languages, we've got English, uh, Russian, and that's it. So not even Chinese on this one. Uh, we can reverse the display if you're left-handed. So if you want it to be displayed when it's the other way up. Uh, we've got initialize sleep. So I think what basically this does is when it first powers up, with, when this is set to no, it will always turn on the cartridge when you first apply USB power. What you can do instead is if you set this to yes, when you plug it in, it won't heat up the cartridge until you press the button to start it heating up. Uh, we've got brightness, so we can change the brightness of the backlight on the LCD. Uh, we've got reset to factory settings, version, version 1A. And that's it for system settings. Then we've got ADC calibration. So we've got, um, it looks like calibration for how sensitive the capacitive touch is. And then we've got one, two, three, four four point calibration for the temperature again 
uh, power settings. So programmable power supply, but we can pick from, or in fact, it's just programmable power supply and a fixed voltage. And we can set the current limit here. So if you've got a particularly sensitive USB power supply, you might want to set that current limit so it doesn't overload it when it first powers on. And then we've got the voltage that we are requesting here from the power supply, so 11 volts. And you can set that as maximum to 12 volts. We may as well set it to 12 volts here. And that's that. Go to exit. Uh, color settings here, so we can change the color of the icons, temperature, info, if you want to do a bit of customization. And that is pretty much it for the menu. So quite a functional device, um, just with the minimum stuff that you'd want to use. Let's uh, see how it heats up a cartridge and then we'll check the calibration. So we've got the USB lead with a little power monitor in it again. So let's power it up and see how much power it takes. So 50 watts at peak there and rapidly up to temperature. Now it has gone into standby because I don't have my finger on here. So let's see what happens when we hold it. And there we go, bang, it's gone straight up to temperature. And then when I release it, it goes into sleep mode. So that is quite responsive actually. And it does heat up very quickly. Let's have a look at the calibration. So we're set to 325 degrees C. And once again, we're over by quite a lot. So it looks like we're going to have to go through the calibration routine once again. What you might just be able to see on the display there is it's showing you what it thinks is the temperature and also the ADC value. So it thinks it's at 200 degrees C and the ADC is reading 270. So presumably when we place this on here, we can see we're about 15 degrees off. So we should just be able to nudge the dial down. There we go. And then we do the same thing for the 300 and the 400 and we basically go through those step by step. And there we go, we're now spot on. We've got one of our PCBs from PCBWay for doing the solder testing. I will upload this to the PCBWay website. I've had a few requests for this. I'll put a link in the description down below. Now this tip that comes with it might be a little bit fine for this type of soldering, but let's give it a go anyway. And no, it handles it just fine with some 0.46 millimeter solder. Let's increase the thickness a little bit to 0.7 and then we'll look at the slightly larger pads down here. And it seems to be drawing about five to 10 watts from the USB power supply as we're delivering heat into these pads but it does fluctuate all over the place. Let's try finally one of these larger pads at the bottom. And it's just starting to struggle just a little bit, but it does flow uh, once we get over that initial dump of heat into the pad. Let's try it with a genuine JBC tip. It's got a slightly larger contact area. And yeah, this has no problem dumping heat into these pads. peaking at about 22 watts there for this larger pad. Let's try it on something a little bit more demanding. So a high thermal demand PCB here, four layers tied together with these vias, so a little bit unfair for such a small cartridge. But it's drawing about 35 watts from the USB power supply, peaking a little bit higher than that sometimes. And that is actually pretty good. 
So this seems to work really quite nicely. When it's in sleep mode, uh, that's with the three Zs, that's when it's not been used for a couple of minutes. Even if you place your fingers in the touch area, it stays asleep, but you can wake it up by nudging the jog wheel. And you saw how quickly that heats up. It works really well. And then when you go to put it down, just like that, it goes pretty much to sleep straight away. So after that one second delay of not holding it, uh, but the moment you pick it up again, it does warm up straight away and it works really well. The problem I have with those vibration sensors is it only takes a nudge on the desk and the Soldier Nines normally wake up, even the Metcal hot air station wakes up from a little bit of vibration. And this one, I don't know why no one's thought of this before, the capacitive touch, because it seems to work really, really well. Uh, I've had no trouble using it just in that past few minutes. I think the only thing that I'd possibly say is uh, with quite a stiff USB cable like this one, it doesn't always want to sit uh, facing you like this just because of how stiff the USB-C cable is. And so that uh, copper ring that they've placed on one half would actually be better placed all the way around it if they could find some way of doing that. But it is actually very functional and seems to work really well. Like it just heats up so quick anyway because it's a very small cartridge. Uh, but it's not woken by accidental vibrations or things moving the cable when you're rummaging around on your desk. So that feature is actually really good. And it provides lots of power into the um, pads, as you saw. Had no trouble uh, with delivering the power, as the other one doesn't really. It's all dependent on the cartridge, really, in terms of how much power we can deliver and how it delivers it to the PCB. But in terms of functionality, this one actually works really well. And I think for £15, you really can't beat it. There's really a not a lot to complain about. Uh, now one thing I was asked about last time is whether the tip has an impedance to the USB connector. So we'll just quickly test that now. So if we just put the probe in the shell just here of the USB-C connector, but this will also be valid for the circuit zero volts on the USB lead. Uh, you can see on the multimeter we've got a good low impedance. So certainly it is tied well. And obviously there's no isolation in this unit anyway. So of course any voltage that is present on the USB power supply above mains ground will also be present on the tip of the cartridge. So certainly if you're using a slightly sketchy USB power supply then you might want to be careful how you use this. Obviously when you're using it with a battery bank or that kind of thing then you'll have no problem with stray voltages on the tip of the cartridge. The particular USB power supply that I use uh, that one has an earthed output, so there's no floating voltages there, so I see uh, mains ground on the tip here. But it is a word of caution just to be careful with what USB power supply you connect these to. But anyway, I think this is really quite a nice cheap soldering iron, especially if it, you just need one to get you out of trouble, or if you're very low on budget, it would certainly do the job. In fact, one of the cartridges from JBC costs more than the soldering iron itself, so that really does say something. Uh, but yeah, a really nice little soldier nine. I'll put a link to this item in the description down below. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to visit PCB Way, the sponsor for this video. And if you do want to order some of my test PCBs, I'll put a link for those in the description down below as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, thanks for watching.